ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I want to come on here and do an update on the whole Michael Jackson, Ray Robson, and James Safechuck situation. So as you guys all know, the other night I tried to do a live stream in my hotel room, and the live stream was crazy. It happened to work, but the internet connection was really bad, so the video was grainy. But we did have a really good discussion. So the first part of my live stream went on for about an hour, and then we started talking about um, Jimmy Savile, and the whole thing just shut the hell down, okay? So then I did a part two, and part two never uploaded onto YouTube, and never, it just disappeared. So I'm like, damn, what the hell is going on? So because there was no part two to finish up what was being said in part one, I just went ahead and made part one private. Um, so I want to go ahead and just kind of finish the discussion because I didn't want people thinking I was comparing Michael Jackson to Jimmy Savile. The question that was asked is, why did Wade and James wait until Michael Jackson died to come out and say something? And I was making a point that a lot of times when people are abused, it's not an uncommon thing for people to wait until somebody dies to then come out and say what they did to them because a lot of times when people are powerful or have a lot of money and prestige, it keeps people from wanting to speak out. Now, I'm not saying that nobody ever spoke against Jimmy Savile or said anything. I'm sure people spoke up, but again, he did not get recognized as this huge pedophile until after he died, okay? So that was the whole point. It wasn't me comparing Michael Jackson to Jimmy or saying that Michael Jackson molested, you know, thousands of people. That was not the point. But because part two never showed up, that's how it seemed with the end of part one, the whole cliffhanger. So anyways, I want to come on here and just do an update. So I definitely been doing more research. I definitely been watching more stuff because like I said, I was down in Orlando busy handling business and everything else. Now I did watch the documentary. I told you guys I watched that twice and I went in with an open mind. I didn't want to go in with a bunch of judgments. I wanted to see what these two men had to say about the situation. And yes, the documentary from what they were saying from their perspective, it was very chilling. It was very unnerving. It did make you look at Michael Jackson like, oh my God, you know, did he really do this? And then I know a lot of people were really mad at Oprah. They felt that Oprah had no business, you know, interviewing them and bringing them on her platform. But me personally, I feel like Oprah is doing her job. That's what Oprah does. She didn't give a damn about Monique. She brought Monique's mother and whole family out there to talk about Monique's whole molestation situation with her brother. So why are we surprised that she would bring, you know, James and Wade on her show? But the reason why I say that I still enjoyed the show is because she did ask them some hard-hitting questions. She did put their foot to the fire. And because of that interview, a lot of folks were able to break down and see the parts where James and Wade were lying. Because it's different when it's a documentary setting and you have the low lights, you have the soft music, as opposed to being asked something live right there on the spot and you're really able to watch these guys, you know what I'm saying, their facial reactions, their body reactions and everything else. And me watching that interview again, I do feel like there's a lot of things that just did not make sense. And Wade tried to skip by a lot of stuff and Oprah was asking him things like, okay, we understand why you didn't speak out when you were 11, but at 22 years old, you're a grown man. Why didn't you say anything? And it's like he really couldn't answer that, you know, but... Upon further research, okay, there's been more stuff that I've been researching and trying to find out and I know you guys have been sending me stuff because again, I don't want to just go off of emotion. I don't want to go off of opinions. I want to go off of facts, okay? And one thing that a lot of people do not know is that currently there's a loophole in the California legal system that, okay, let's say you were molested as a child. You have three years after your adult birthday. So I'm assuming after the age of 21, that's when you're you know legally considered an adult. You have from between the ages of 21 and 24, I believe, it's a three year you know gap where if you were molested by somebody back when you were younger, at that point in time, you can sue them, you can file criminal charges, things like that, okay? The problem with Wade, when he decided to come out and start speaking about Michael Jackson, this was long after the three years was up. So he initially tried to sue back in like 2016, and he was trying to sue for $1.62 billion, okay? Billion with a B. I didn't realize the lawsuit was that huge. 
$1.62 billion. At that point in time, the lawsuit was dismissed because they said the statute of limitations had ran out. There's nothing they can do. It's dismissed. Well, what it looks like now from what I'm seeing and going back and watching the Oprah interview is that Wade is very much aware of that loophole. And this is what that loophole says. Check this out. So this is what happens with that loophole in the state of California. So basically the giant loophole in the statute of limitations essentially lets the accuser reset those three years, but only a very specific condition. Namely, having been unaware of the crime happening to you as it was happening, basically all you have to do is claim that you have not been aware or that you didn't understand that the abuse was happening to you and only now years later have you understood that you were abused at the time and that a crime was being committed on you. You could say that you discovered it through therapy or after surviving an accident, etc. So in my personal opinion, I feel like this loophole in the statute of limitations is what Wade and James are using and this is what's leading them to sue the Michael Jackson estate this time. And this is also the reason why they chose to do Leaving Neverland and Oprah special after Neverland. And if you go back and watch this special, you'll see where James and Wade were constantly trying to refer back to therapy. And James was saying that the reason why, you know, he was triggered to come out is because he heard what Wade said on television and somehow that triggered him to come out. So one thing you'll notice during the Oprah interview she was asking them, well, when did they discover this? When did they get the strength to come out? And that's going to be one of the key words, the word when, because that's what's going to help them in that lawsuit. So basically they use the Neverland documentary and the Oprah Winfrey interview to basically spearhead this lawsuit that's going to be coming. Wade claims that he really only understood the abuse after the birth of his child. And Jimmy said he understood the abuse after watching Wade talk about it on the NBC show with Matt Lauer. Y'all go ahead and check this out. And, right. But when did you start to think of it as abuse? It wasn't until uh, Wade came out. I was really suffering. Uh, I couldn't sleep at night. I would sleep for two hours and I'd wake up and my body was buzzing. And, uh, and I'd be up all night. And, and I hated myself. And I don't know why. It's like, why do I hate myself? And th this intense feeling of ha hate is, it's, you don't understand it. And then when I see Wade come out, you go, okay, th maybe there's a, there's a reason for this. Okay, so here's the thing that I think it's so hard for people who have not had this kind of trauma or experience in their lives to understand. And that is, if you were abused, why would you continue to want to be around the person? I think one of the things that the uh, Michael Jack Jackson's estate is saying about you now is that you, Wade, had tried to get a job working with his organization or going on tour. Why would you want to continue? Can you explain to people why you want to continue the association if you have been abused? I had no understanding of it being abuse. You know, I loved Michael. And, and all the times that, that I testified and, you know, the many, many times that I gushed over him publicly in interviews or whatever it may be, um, that was from a real place, mm -hmm. you know? Um, while never forgetting any of the sexual details that happened between us, but having no understanding that it was abuse, having no concept in my mind that anything about Michael could ever be bad. Anything that Michael did was right to me for so many years. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. 
So like I said, in my personal opinion, now that I know about the loophole, this does seem shady to me, okay? It does seem shady that they have the, you know, the Neverland documentary, they're speaking on Oprah, and a lot of the words that they're using are very, very convoluted. They keep referring to themselves as children, and granted, when the first case happened, yes, you were a child, Wade, but when the second case came out, at that point in time, at any point in time, they both could have spoke up and said, this is a horrible man, he did this. They could have had those other so-called victims back, but they chose not to. Now, other people are also speaking out about Wade's character because for so many years, you know, Wade has just been seen as just, you know, this really cool white boy who can dance. So now other people in the industry are speaking out and I wanna go ahead and read something from a dance choreographer named Darren Henson. He went on a rant on Facebook the other day and basically blasted Wade for sleeping with Britney Spears, cheating on Michael Jackson's niece, and then also sleeping with Mai Tai, who was Prince's wife. So Wade is definitely not an innocent, you know, soft-spoken young man who was abused. He definitely has a really narcissistic side to him as well. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Okay, I was gonna kind of stay out of this mess, but I, I just have to say this. This whole Wade Robson situation is a piece of garbage. Um, you're talking about a guy who was a heavy drug addict. You're talking about a guy who I saw with my own eyes slobbing, tongue kissing his sister in a Las Vegas club. Yes, I said it. I saw him tongue kissing his own sister in Las Vegas in a club. The dude, his moral compass is so low. He's fabricated these lies based upon things that no one else would know about or could disprove, right? So he's created this scenario and produced it and sold it. That's all you're watching. It's a piece of garbage. All right, so you guys just heard what Darian Henson had to say. So after Darren Henson's video kind of went viral, and if you guys all know Darren Henson, is a dancer and choreographer and he's worked with Wade. I think they worked on that show together like back in the 2000s. So this other choreographer came out recently and he blasted him. His name is Clyde Jenkins and he went on this huge rant on social media. I'm gonna go ahead and read this to y'all. Yes, honey, I got my mother goose glasses on, let's go. So Clyde says, Wade Robson, you should be ashamed of yourself. You and your family befriended the biggest star in the world. I personally recall your mom, Joy, calling MJJ Music with the sob story about needing money, knowing that Michael Jackson loved her and your entire family and would do anything to help her. Michael especially loved you like a son because you dreamed of being a dancer as your mother took you around Australia, impersonating who? Michael Jackson. Your family moved to the United States, leaving your father behind, and Michael gave you a record deal as part of a rap duo named Q, and it failed. Michael set you up with his niece, Brandy. You guys were together for several years until you cheated with other women several times and she left you. You still remained in the Jackson circle. Why? Because it opened doors for you being associated with Michael Jackson and his family. That association with Michael Jackson afforded you the opportunity to befriend such artists as Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears. And what did you do? You started working with Justin as a choreographer, then slept with his girlfriend Britney Spears and was fired. Justin then wrote a song called Cry Me a River, yet you claim Justin was your friend. You used your association with Michael Jackson to befriend Prince and Maite. And what did you do? You slept with her. Some friends you are. You use your association with Michael Jackson to get yourself a gig on a television dance show. Word gets out about your previous disregard and loyalty towards high-profile celebrities, and what happens? You get cut from that show. Michael Jackson plans his This Is It concert, and you beg to be the choreographer for the show. Michael chooses another choreographer, and what do you do? Now that your web of lies are catching up to you, and you are now Hollywood's damaged goods, you turn on the one man who looked out for you and your family your entire life, make up child abuse slash molestation allegations that you have empathetically stated for many years never happened. Fast forward to today, 
Michael Jackson is sadly no longer with us, and you now beg Michael's nephew, Taz Jackson, for VIP access to Michael Jackson's funeral for you and your entire family. Yet you claim this monster molested you. Sick. You are now considered a home-wrecking, disloyal individual and is essentially blackballed from Hollywood. What do you do because the world knows you are associated with Michael Jackson? You use that association to once again change your lifelong story to now claim that Michael Jackson molested you. Why? Because you're broke, your wife is demanding you start making money or she'll leave you. You now convince another broke kid from Michael's past, the Pepsi commercial, to join you in this frivolous lawsuit against Michael Jackson's estate for hundreds of millions of dollars. The court agrees that there's no merit to the lawsuit and dismissed it. The Jackson family never fight back when people say disparaging things about their family. Ms. Jackson once told me when I quoted her this, she replied, because dirt sinks, cream rises. Wade knows this to be true as well. So what does he do? Him and James Safechuck concoct a story so salacious, so scandalous, so despicable, and present it to HBO for a one-sided, explosive television documentary of lies in hopes that Michael Jackson's billion-dollar estate will settle with you financially to make this documentary go away. Well, the documentary of lies will air this weekend, and unlike the Jacksons' past, this new generation of Jackson kids are not having it. They are suing HBO for airing your lying ass. I hope when all this is said and done, the estate countersues you in a civil court and wins. I hope it renders you penniless for the rest of your life. Michael Jackson was good to you, your mother, Joy, your sister, Chanel, and because your gravy train has run out, this is how you repay him. You are a sad excuse for a human being. Sorry for this long post, but knowing what I know, I couldn't be silent. For any of you who thought that Michael Jackson was strange, I get it, because there's no one on earth to compare him to. Yes, there are other child stars who grew up to blend into society, I get it. But when you are Michael Jackson, the only thing on earth that is more recognizable than you is the yellow M at McDonald's. That in itself is strange. And then somebody named Austin Brown goes on to say this. Austin Brown says, at Kev our press 2000 this is my last comment because i never comment on this situation but you should know that way 10 years ago told me personally how he was offered money to do exactly what he's doing now but would never because it never happened he loved mj funny how 10 years later after multiple tributes and michael not being dead this comes out of left field what i'm telling you is a fact so it's up to you to decipher for yourself and hopefully you're smarter than that so that's what Several choreographers said, now there's this whole thing with Aaron Carter. And as we all know, Aaron Carter was really close to Michael Jackson. And he's now come out and said that he also has slept in Michael Jackson's bed, but that nothing happened. And he really wants to punch Wade Robson in the face. So this is what Aaron Carter is saying. Aaron Carter claims that Michael Jackson is innocent and Wade Robson, the famous choreographer and Jackson accuser featured in the HBO documentary Leaving Neverland, is lying. Carter issued an angry video to TMZ on Monday stating that he wanted to fight Robson over the allegations. Carter said he's angry about a tweet from Robson which mentioned Carter and Jackson's alleged behavior. The tweet, however, read, I'm not alone. You can ask at Aaron Carter. It was sent by fake account. In the video conversation, Carter issues a message of violence to Robson. He says, I don't understand. You try to tie my name to this. I'm not that guy. I'm not the one. I might be a pop singer, but I'm also from the fucking South. You want to come at me on some sour shit? You're lucky I got things to lose now because I would punch you in your face. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out Aaron Carter's video. Check this out. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. someone that is like okay you're you're a grown man and when michael jackson was alive you are backing him you are up his ass you are kissing his ass you are there to testify for him under oath and then when he dies you decide that that's a good time to come that, that come out no what you're doing is you're actually stomping on 
an icon and a, le a legend's grave. You're stomping on his grave. Not based upon my experience, because me staying with Michael Jackson, I hung out with Michael Jackson. I stayed at his house. I stayed in his bedroom. How old, how, how, how old were you? I was 15. Oh, the, the filmmaker says that they were not paid for leaving Neverland. Um, they so had you don't filed, think, they you had don't, don't think for the interview that they you don't think that for the interviews they're doing they're not getting paid because I've been offered I've been offered six figures already for an interview and I turned them all down I told them to go fuck themselves like Wade I'm very disappointed in because I don't understand and then you're putting and then he's trying to tie my name into this shit like putting like at Aaron Carter I'm not that guy I'm not the one like I'm, I'm I might be a pop singer but I'm also from the fucking south and you fucking come at me on some sour shit you're lucky I got something to lose now like, because I would punch you in your face. I would. And maybe ask you, hey, are you telling the truth? I'll punch you in your face first. Because what you're doing is you're stomping on someone's grave who's there for you, taught you things, did all these kind of things. And then you guys are sitting there talking about how you were, uh, 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 in all this apart for me to understand how, how much. Honey. All right, so you guys just watch Aaron Carter. He went off on TMZ. So like I said, the more information that has come out after this documentary has definitely got me giving these two guys the side eye, especially now that I know about that loophole and the fact that they are still moving forward with the lawsuit. To me, when you're a victim, especially when the statute of limitations is gone and dried up, if they were really caring about victims and wanting to get this story out there, then there's no reason for this whole money grab. And to me now, it seems like it's more important for them to sue and get some money as opposed to really trying to help real victims, okay? So this entire situation is insane. And I also feel like at this point, now they're trying to do anything to ruin Michael Jackson's legacy. And this is what we talked about in part two. And like I said in part two of the um, live stream, I said I'm noticing now that they're trying to start a mute Michael Jackson movement like they did with R. Kelly. They're saying that radio stations in Canada and a few other places are banning Michael Jackson's music. And people were asking me, was I still going to listen to, you know, Michael Jackson? Was I going to mute Michael Jackson? And I stayed on my live stream. Hell no. OK, regardless of these allegations, I'm still going to be on my beat it shit. OK, I'm still going to be listening to Smooth Criminal and Heal the World. I'm still a fan of Michael Jackson, point blank, period. And I'm not going to front. The same way I don't knock people who still want to listen to R. Kelly's music. Some people know how to separate the two. And in this situation, we can't compare him to R. Kelly because there was never any real evidence that Michael Jackson did anything. Because unlike R. Kelly, there was never anything that tied Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying, that was ever solid that he abused kids, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like they are trying to ruin his legacy. If you guys do not know, yesterday... Fox announced that they are pulling the Michael Jackson episode that he did with The Simpsons. I don't recall anybody boycotting this, anybody saying anything, but because we live in this new Me Too era, people are running with this, and now they're trying to remove that episode. They're going to take it out of future box sets. You can't find it on um, Netflix or wherever they had it on. They're taking that out, and that to me is bullshit because when The Simpsons first came out back in the 90s when we were kids, Michael Jackson is the one who led the way for that season three episode of um, The Simpsons. I remember everybody tuning in to watch it. That was one of the best episodes. Happy birthday, Lisa. Lisa, it's your birthday. I remember everybody singing that. Michael Jackson was very, very intricate in helping to promote The Simpsons. And guess what? He did it for free. He never received a dime from that. So I feel like The Simpsons creators and Fox, they owe Michael better than that. And that's crap that they want to remove that episode based off of this documentary, okay? I find it very strange now that they're trying to basically erase his legacy and rewrite history. And I don't agree with that. Especially when we have people who are admitted rapists who are admitted pedophiles like Roman Polanski and somehow his legacy is still intact. He's still able to make movies. Hollywood still gives him standing ovations. Goes for Roman Polanski. But now they're trying to rewrite history and act like Michael Jackson never existed. And let's go ahead and try and rewrite him out of everything and mute his music. So I find that part very, very disturbing with everything that's going on now after this documentary, where a lot of it was basically James and Wade's side of the story, okay? Another thing I will say is this. I still stand by my original comment that I said in my live stream. 
Michael Jackson does bear some of this responsibility. I'm sorry. I have to keep that 100. I'd be fake as fuck not to, okay? My thing is, at the end of the day, people can say, well, he was childlike. He didn't have a childhood. There's no excuse for a grown man to ever invite children into his bedroom. That's my personal opinion. And I really feel like, once again, if this was Ray Ray, you know what I'm saying, Juicy Jerry Curl ass Jackson, nobody would be excusing this. If there was a man named Ray Ray on the block who allowed kids to play in his bedroom and sleep in his bed, even though nothing sexual happened, People would give Ray Ray the side eye. Folks would not allow their kids to go to Ray Ray's house, okay? But again, like I always say, when it comes to celebrities, it's like, you know, as adults and as parents and as people, we throw all common sense out the window. And that's one thing that really bothered me in that documentary is that, okay, even if all this abuse happened, okay, let's say this, you know, what they're saying is true, the parents literally left their children with Michael Jackson, for no other reason than the fact that his name was Michael Jackson, he was one of the biggest stars in the world, and he had money. And it's like, as a parent, you have to use common sense. It's your job to protect your child. Just like with the R. Kelly parents, basically handing off their daughters to R. Kelly in hopes of getting them a record deal, in hopes of getting them some type of fame. And that's why I fought the parents. My thing with the whole Michael Jackson situation is that we had the first case with the first accuser, and that was obviously a ploy. We have video evidence of the father saying that he was doing this to blackmail Jackson. We all know the father ended up committing suicide shortly after Michael Jackson died. Y'all go ahead and listen to this audio. The father stating that he was going to blackmail Jackson. Go ahead and check this out. This. This man is going to be humiliated beyond belief. Yeah. He will not believe it. He will not believe what's going to happen to him. Yeah. Beyond, his, beyond his worst nightmares, sell so one more record. If I go through with this, I win big time. I will get everything I want. They will be destroyed forever. Jackson's private investigator says the tapes prove that, ta that Jackson is telling the truth about his accusers just wanting money. All right, so you guys just saw that. So my thing is, Michael Jackson settled out of court because he didn't want to take it to court. It would have cost him more money. He just wanted to be done with this. You know, and a lot of people felt like that was the wrong move because if somebody accuses you of something that heinous, you want to fight it. You know, but Michael Jackson, he just did not want to be put under the pressure of that. So he ended up just, you know, settling. He gave them some money, went on with his life, okay? And at that point, okay, I got it. But then you don't put yourself back into that situation. That's the part that where I have to hold Michael accountable. Because that first situation should have taught him as a grown adult man that there are evil people out here. They are willing to sell their souls, lie, just to get me in trouble, just to get my money, just to ruin my reputation. So he should have been even more standoffish. He should have been even more restricted from, you know, dealing with young children. And, you know, like I said in the live stream, when he did that interview with Martin Bashir, that's what really helped to, you know, start the destruction of his legacy. Because that Bashir documentary was so damaging, you know, it just really made people give him the side eye. And it was shortly after that Bashir uh, documentary, is when Jordan Chandler's mother came out. I feel like that documentary helped to plant seeds in her head. We all know this woman had, you know, a history of lying, shoplifting. She had all types of, you know, just nefarious shit attached to her. And I feel like that documentary planted seeds in her head to then say that Michael Jackson abused her child with cancer, okay? So I feel like as an adult, I do have the right to blame Michael Jackson in that instance, okay? He was wrong for not being even more cautious the second time around. That goes for anybody in any situation. If you find yourself involved in a situation or dealing with some people and it ends up fucking you over and then you're not more cautious the next time, then that's on you. And that's all I'm saying is that as an adult, he should have been even more wary, okay? They shouldn't have been, he shouldn't have been dealing with any more kids after that just because of all the mess that went on the first time. You know, it's one thing to don't go to charity events, go to the hospital and go visit them. It's another thing to have them literally move in with you, okay? So I think because of that, is why, you know, we were able to have the lawsuits, is why that there was even a space for them to create this whole Leave and Neverland documentary. And it's sad because from everything I'm researching, it looks like Wade's character is definitely shady. You know, and that's why I said it's good that we were able to see him in a whole nother atmosphere. Outside of the dimly lit interviews on the documentary and the sad music, on Oprah, you kind of saw his mind, you know, just thinking and thinking of ways to keep up with the lies and the questions that Oprah was hitting him with. He wasn't able to answer as quickly as when it's a documentary setting and he's able to just kind of regurgitate the story, you know, cut, recut, 
go ahead and read it back, go ahead and say it, you know, comes off more scripted in the documentary than when Oprah was interviewing him. So this entire situation is crazy. The Jacksons are suing HBO as they should to protect their legacy. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all this plays out. But again, I want to bring out both parts. You know what I'm saying? I have to be honest in my opinion that I felt like Michael Jackson put himself in these situations that just were not necessary, you know, dealing with these people and dealing with these kids and just dealing with all the mess. But I also feel like now that I know about that loophole, now it makes further sense. Now all the pieces are fitting in as to why they're saying what they're saying, especially if they stand to potentially to get $1.62 billion of Michael Jackson's money, his legacy, his estate. So it just goes to show that, you know, even though you can look out for people, have a pure heart, have the best intentions, some people are just evil and corrupt. And this is why you have to be careful who you call a friend, who you decide to, you know, mix with, who you decide to mingle with, because folks will look you dead in their face, act like they're cool with you, and then turn around and just lie their ass off just to get to where the fuck they think they're gonna get to. You feel me? And this is really sad because like I said, for so many years, Michael Jackson looked out for Wade Robson. Nobody would have known who Wade Robson was if it was not for Michael Jackson basically taking this man under his arm and looking out for him. So this entire situation is interesting. I'm going to stay on top of this story. I definitely want to know how it ends up playing out. But at this point in time, I have to give both of these so-called victims the side eye. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, concerning Wade Robson and you know other choreographers coming out and basically stating his real character how do you guys feel about Aaron Carter coming out and defending Michael Jackson and going off on Wade Robson and then also did you guys know about the loophole are you guys just not hearing about the loophole and do you feel like that this is why they decided to push through with this documentary and go on Oprah so that way they can continue their lawsuit via this loophole so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces